This is introduction to factoring, and there's a very specific reason that I started with factoring in this class, and that's because factoring is the most important algebra tool that you will need to know to be successful in any math class, especially um, calculus. So you're going to need to know how to factor to be successful in this class. If something in this video is confusing to you, then I definitely encourage you to take some couple extra steps to review some more factoring examples. The first factoring technique is the common factor technique. And the thing about common factor is it works in any situation, meaning any number of terms, and you should always, always, always look for the common factor first. Okay. So I have my example down here. You can see I have three terms. Now the terms are the pieces separated by the plus or minus signs. So you can see these three terms here. We want to see what is in common between all three of these terms. Now we notice that they all have a factor of 8 in common, so that's easy. But notice that they all have a variable of x. So our common factor in this one is an 8x. So we're going to be factoring out an 8x, and then we're going to see what we have left. So you basically take each of these individual terms and divide it by what you factored out. 24x cubed divided by 8x gives me a 3x squared. A negative 16x squared divided by 8x, negative 16 divided by 8 is 2 x squared divided by x, you subtract one of those x's and that gives us x. And then last but not least, 8x divided by 8x leaves me with 1. So if you have three terms here, you should be having three terms left over in this factor down here. Okay, so if everything factors out, then you need to put that term of a 1 in there. Now you can always check this or check any factoring techniques by multiplying these back out. So if you wanted to check this, you could distribute this 8x back through. And then in other parts of the video, you can see where maybe this isn't the last step of this problem here. Maybe you can factor it farther, but that's in the next step. The other thing about common factor is that it gets missed a lot. And the one reason that I think it gets missed a lot is because notice it's only got one set of parentheses here because the other factor just factors out. So I think when people start factoring, they typically start just by factoring by setting up two sets of parentheses. Try and get out of that habit and always look for common factor first. It's going to make it much easier in the long run if you reduce these numbers and make them a lot smaller to deal with. So that's how common factor works. Always look for it first, even though it doesn't set up as two sets of parentheses. Factor by grouping. Factor by grouping only works if there's four terms. So notice here if I count the terms in between the plus and minus sign, there's four terms. You want to put it in descending order, which is this is here. Notice I have a cubed, a squared, a, and then no a. So that's in descending order. And then if it's like that, you group the first two and you group the last two. Notice I didn't group them with parentheses because if I had put parentheses here, that actually changes the signs dealing with this negative there. So do not use parentheses in this matter. You want to use underlines just like I have right here. Okay, so I have them grouped, and then you're going to do common factor in each of these groups. So in the first two, I have a factor of 5a squared in common. If I take that out, I'm left with a 2a plus 1. Notice my middle sign is subtraction. So if that's a subtraction there, it will always be a subtraction here. And then I'm going to see what's in common between my last group. So I have a 4a and a 2. I have a 2 in common. So I'm going to factor out 2. And actually, I'm going to be factoring out a negative 2. So if that middle sign is negative, then you're actually going to be dividing by a negative there. Negative 4a divided by negative 2 leaves me a positive 2. And negative 2 divided by negative 2 leaves me with a plus 1. And I forgot my a. Okay, now... In this, you've kind of taken it from four terms and you've put it down into two terms. Notice again this yellow negative here is my dividing factor. 
So I have a term here and I have a term there. Okay, we want to see what do we have in common between these two terms. We actually do have a common factor and our common factor is this 2a plus 1. So what we do is we factor out that common factor. I take out a 2a plus 1 and I'm left with this 5a squared from my first parentheses, from my first red underline, and I have a negative 2 left over from my second underline. Now notice this 2a plus 1 is not squared, just like I didn't square or cube this 8x back here. It's my common factor. I factor it out. In those parentheses, these blue highlights here, must be identical for factor by grouping to work. If it's not identical, you cannot factor it by grouping. So this is our final answer, and you can check this by foiling it back out, multiplying it back out using the first outside, inside, last technique. Okay, trinomial. It's got the prefix tri, so it only works with a polynomial that has three terms. And I teach this as a reverse FOIL method. So if I have a trinomial, I set up my two sets of parentheses, and that's where it kind of negates the common factor technique that I said, where we don't set up our two sets of parentheses. So always look for common factor first, and then move on to this. So my FOIL, parenthes so my FOIL process Starts with my first, what times what gives me z squared? Well, that's z times z. Then my last, what times what gives me 20? And that's going to go in my last two places. Well, I have a few options here. So I have 1 times 20, I have 2 times 10, and I have 4 times 5. But I need to add or subtract these to give me my middle term there. So which of these are going to add or subtract to give me a 1? Well, the only option is this 4 and this 5. So I'm going to put a 4 here and a 5 there. So if I do my outside, I get a 5z. If I multiply my inside, I get a 4z. And I want to add or subtract those together to get a positive z. Well, the only way that's going to work is if 5 is positive and 4 is negative. So I find my 5, I make it positive, I find my 4, I make it negative. Double check that that confirms my last sign here. Negative 4 times positive 5 gives me negative 20. And so that is it factored using the trinomial. And again, you can always check by foiling it back out. Now that one was a little easier because my first term, my z squared, didn't have any coefficients or didn't have any numbers in front. Now let's move to the second example here. It's going to be a little bit more complicated. So again, three terms with no common factors. So I set up my sets of parentheses. I start with my first. What times what gives me 5b squared? Well, 5 is prime, so the only choices that I have to make are 5 and 1. So that makes it a little easier. I have a 5b and a 1b. Then my last. What times what gives me 12? Well, I have 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 4 times 3. So you might think, how can I add or subtract these to give me a 28? But it's a lot different here because now I have to multiply by this here. So let me just pick one and I'll show you how this is going to work. And I always like to start by suggesting with the numbers that are closest together. So let me start with 4 and 3. So if I do my outside, notice I have to multiply by this 5. So I have 5b times 3, which is 15b. And I have my inside, which is 4b. And so I ask myself, can I add or subtract this to give me 28? And that's no good. So what I do is I need to try some other sort of combination here. Okay, so I don't erase, I cross out, and I try again. Now I have to keep my 5b and my b the same because there were no other options there. But let me just switch the 3 and 4 and put them in opposite places. So my outside is a 20b, my inside is a 3b. Again, I cannot add or subtract that to give me 28, so that's no good. So 3 and 4 don't work. Let's move on to the next one. Let's try 2 and 6. My outside gives me a 30b, inside gives me a 20b, 
If I subtract these, that gives me a 28. So I need a negative 30 plus 2 to give me a negative 28. Confirm my last sign, which is negative here. Positive 2 times negative 6 does give me a negative 12. And so therefore, I have factored this completely. My last factoring technique is called difference of squares. It works with two terms. Both terms have to be squares. And it's got to be a subtraction in between. Hence the difference, the subtraction, of squares, where I have two squares. This one factors a lot like the trinomial, where you set up your two sets of parentheses. But something special happens in this one. So, factors of my first, x squared, y squared, are just x, y. Factors of my last, of 81, are 9 and 9. And when you factor difference of squares, one's always going to be positive and one's always going to be negative. Because if I did my outside inside here, my outside I'd have negative 9xy, my inside I'd have positive 9xy, and those would give me 0, which is exactly what I want because I don't have a middle term like I did in the trinomial. Okay. So this one here is now factored completely. So we have reviewed all of our factoring techniques. Let's put them all together. Factor completely. So in the in this class, or so in this class, we aren't really going to see factor by trinomial or factor by grouping. It's just going to say factor, and it's your choice to decide what factoring method to use. So this is kind of the cheat sheet that I go by here. First and foremost, always look for common factor. No matter how many terms you have, always factor out the whole entire common factor. Then look at the number of terms because that's going to tell you how it's going to factor farther. If it has four terms, you factor by grouping. Three terms, you factor by trinomial. Two terms, difference of squares. And then once you factor those, look at each individual parentheses to see if it can see if it can be factored farther past that. All right. So here, I notice I have four terms. So our first instinct might be to factor by grouping. But really, we have a common factor between all four terms. So in this, I can factor out a 5. And that leaves me with the 3x squared minus 2, oops, sorry, 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 2. Now notice in these parentheses, I still have four terms. So I still can factor this one by grouping. Group my first two, group my last two. So it gives me five. And I'm going to do brackets here, actually, because I'm going to use smaller parentheses to help me with my grouping. In my first red underline here, I have a common factor of x squared. If I take that out, I'm left with 3x minus 2 minus I don't have anything in common between my last two terms, but I can factor out that negative. So you might want to think about it as factoring out a negative 1. And so that leaves me with the 3x minus 2. Well, my parentheses match, so that means I can factor it as a grouping. So I'm going to keep this 5 out here, keep this bracket out here. I'm going to factor out my 3x minus 2, and that leaves me with x squared minus 1. Now I notice I it's all multiplication, so I really don't need these brackets, so I'm going to drop them in the last step. Okay, But check again. Look at each individual factor now to see if either one of those can be factored farther. And our last one actually can. It's got two terms. It's a difference of squares. So I'm going to factor that one one more step. Okay, So I have 5. 3x minus 2, and notice I copy everything down from step to step so I don't lose anything. And then my x squared minus 1, I have x times x to give me x squared, 1 times 1 gives me 1, 1 positive, 1 negative. And so now I have factored this one completely because in my parentheses I have no more terms that can possibly factor farther. So just because you factored it one step, Go back and continue to see if you cannot factor it more and more and more. And so that has reviewed all of our factoring techniques that we will need to utilize in general calculus.